welcome to Nachtwaff and Pilot. And today's guest is Veronica Bartolini. And I think I actually said it right for a change. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is her third visit to our show. And um, this time she didn't have questions ahead of time for me. So we'll, we'll I see. I have something new, though. This is great. Um, I have something new, and I'm going to mention it right off the bat and get it out of the way. My necklace is a synthetic stone. And they called it Dragon Heart. And it's framed with angel's wings. And my partner Lou got it for me for Christmas. And this was a major surprise. And this is the first time he's actually bought me a gift that was a total surprise. It's so, beautiful. I love it. Thank you. I, I'm just jazzed. <laughs> We've been together for 20 years, you know. Happy, happy belated birthday to Lou and happy holidays to you all. Thank you. Um, for the audience, um, my partner just turned 72 a little over a week ago. So, yeah, we've had lots of stuff this month. <clears throat> so, you said you had new stuff. Yeah, speaking of your beautiful necklace, um, I have permission. I'm going to do a whole video on this. Uh, I, um, a, a SSP brother uh, contacted me through his sister, and uh, his name is Ramin Vasquez, uh, but I, his, it's German in English. But um, he said he didn't want to see any of my videos or anything, but when Sylvia, we got connected through James. And so this was James like, Ring? a month ago, yeah, James Ring, about a month ago. I'm, I Our went to audience doesn't know who all these people are, so you have to- Oh, okay, me. sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we so are to part go. of a community, just so the audience knows, there are probably at this point, 50 of us who are public, and we mostly know each other, at least on social media. So. Yes. And so I went to go meet um, Sylvia, Andy, her brother, and then um, Sylvia's daughter. And then a few, two weeks later, she told um, her brother, uh, Hameen to about me and he said that as soon as he saw my my picture on my Facebook in my police uniform he said that's her I know her they used to call her La Dragona <laughs> the dragon La Dragona <laughs> the <Yeah>. dragoness <laughs> yeah can you believe that and he told me that I can I can speak about this on on my YouTube channel I like I said this is the first time I'm speaking publicly and I just wanted to say thank you for letting me talk about this he was, he was, uh, I can go on to detail. I wrote down how he saw me in the, in the, um, what is it called? The tube, the long tube that came down like that. Uh, he was in the middle. There was a lady to my, to his left and I was to his right. And he long told me about all our, are we talking the water, about the water tube, the, what do you call that? The regen, regen tank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so he, Mm -hmm. He said that he memorized my face. He said the next time I see her, I, I will remember her. And um, there was two scientists working on me and uh, with clipboards. And one of them said, wow, she's a Hulk. And he says, you mean, yeah, like the Incredible Hulk. And what they had is they were putting some machine like in the midsection here to monitor and then to inject things in both arms and I think that's what because we we're going to talk about the black goo and the green goo he mm -hmm. said it was a green substance but that my colors were green and red and that in my head they had these um things stuck probes on my head my eyes were closed and they also had this machine that they were monitoring under under the umbilical cord it just kept going like it was just I don't know. I think they were just, uh, it kind of reminded me of my favorite movie, Weird Science. <laughs> when they put the Barbie and they were wearing their bra hats, you know, the bra hats. Hat. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. She's alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was impressive. And then also he said they had thing, stuff under our fingertips um, uh, for, for, I don't know, to feed off information because he also remembered me from the dolphin program and he, they partnered him with me 
because what they would do is they would partner the A plus, S plus students with like the C plus students. So he said that he, he was a C plus student and they partnered him with me and that we, after everything, when we went into the water and, you know, uh, he said, I was, I was able to talk to the dolphins and I am, I'm able to talk to them telepathically and I'll be outside and, and I'll just think of them or ask them for help and they'll show up in the clouds or, the, or um, birds, the red robins or cardinals will come. Mm. And I'm like, it's so cool. So at the end of everything uh, at, from the dolphin program, they took us individually into interrogation to find out what the heck, you know, we learned. He said it was pretty tough. Like, you know, it was, well, like interrogation. So um, they had us put our fingertips like this, like one on top of the other, flat like that, under. To, be, sure to, to, yeah. be sure to describe because most of our, our listeners are radio. They can't Oh, speak. that's right. So I was told to put my hands <clears throat> out flat, um, palms down, and his were palms up on mine. And we just touched fingertips, and that's how we communicated telepathically. And then I told them, I know that I was served with Max Spears. I said, because I, 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 I just know it. And I, and, I, and I know that I had one dream of him um, in the underground base. And he told me that, um, because he, he told me about the number 33. And I'm like, yeah, that's how much I was charging this year, 33, 33 for readings, right? It's going mm -hmm. up now, baby. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he said, yeah, we were in, in squadrons of 33, you know, each, um, we each would do missions with other 30, other agents that were, you know, SSP 33 in other missions and the other missions intertwine intermingle. That's why I remember Susan and, um, okay. and things like that. So he told me uh, that Max Su was Susan and her team are going to be on my show the first saturday in february oh that's good i can't wait so, that's good i was listening to them right now on misha's show <laughs> so so was i um yeah that was that's their virgin broadcast so <clears throat> had to listen <laughs> <laughs> yes yes but and yeah. yeah so um he said that um you know uh they were talking, Jamin and Hamin and Max were talking, and then he thought that I was part of the scientist group that were there, even though I was in uniform. He said there um, that there was a, a a guy that was like a chatterbox, and he had a scar on his left eye, all the way down to his arm, and that when he was in the region tank, he asked for them not to take it off because it was I, it was during the the Mars wars with the Raptors, and he wanted to keep the scar the, the scar. And uh, anyway, we were talking, they were talking, Max and, and Jamin, and then I have to tell Susan, this is new information. He said that there was a, a girl with red fiery hair and she had an Irish accent. And then she said, oh man, by the time you stop talking, I'm gonna be an old lady. You know how Susan talks, right? Yeah. And then she's do. like, I'm gonna go to a pub and get me some beer. <laughs> and I was, he described her just to the T and I can't wait to tell her. And then uh, we got ready. Um, I moved. I moved forward to them because they were joking about something. And um, then I spoke, and he's like, "Oh, she's part of our group." So they, we all got. This was like in a classroom setting underground, under one of the bases underground. And um, he said we were going to get ready to go to Mars. And that uh, Max said, "Okay, something like, okay, guys, let's do it." And he tapped me on the left shoulder, and then we all went. You know, um, so it was, it's very exciting to me. I, I have, I wrote some things down, um, but, um, oh yeah, another thing before I forget, when, when we were in the water, he said that uh, some, some wore like a, we had this clear, crystal clear um, helmet. And I'm like, what? So he said, you could barely tell, like, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. Um, and like I said, I haven't written it all, all down like in, in order yet, but I just wanted to tell you because Penny, I knew that one day somebody else would remember me <laughs> that I'm not nuts, you know, that I'm not like, that oh, I'm not alone. I know, I, I know that feeling that when you're, when you're coming forward with this stuff, 
and nobody remembers you. Yeah. That first person who says, oh, yeah, I remember you. Even if you don't remember them, it's like, oh my God, validation. <laughs> because this is this is crazy making. Mm-hmm. You know? And and it's 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 the most amazing thing when when you get that validation. And some people actually go crazy when they get the validation. Um they just well, I've been a nobody for so long and I have validation, so I'm going to go bat shit and drive everybody around me nuts. And that lasts about a year. And then they finally realize that they ain't special just because someone else remembered them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they go, oh, I've been an ass. And then they try to <laughs> mend fences. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while probably. <laughs> Yeah, some of them takes longer than others, but um, there are a couple of people that in that phase, they have been so nasty to me, I will never allow them to mend that fence. But then there are others that I'm like, hmm, you know, (laughs) it depends on how nasty they were to me in that phase. Um, But yeah, um, we have some people in this community who are well, I'm just going to say it. We're all damaged. We all have problems. And we have to be patient with each other because we all know how fucked up we are. And mm-hmm. the public is expecting us to be perfect representatives of the programs we were in. And that ain't happening. We're too messed up for that. So the fact that that people from different factions in space are able to come on interviews together and be civil to one another on air is like a major accomplishment. And the public needs to understand that. Um, I bring that up because lately I've been hit with, you guys are all saying different things. (laughs) That That means you're lying. I'm like, Uh, no, it means we're from six different factions, at least two of which are at war with each other. And you're hearing people from both sides of that war, and you know they're not going to tell the same story. If they did, (laughs) there's something wrong. (laughs) Yeah, and different missions, and like I said, some will overlap. And different generations. Right. Because I'm from, I was taken in 1959. When were you taken? 71. So. Well, I was born in 71 and I can remember from the time I was three years old. So probably 73. So I would be what? Second generation, right? You would be second generation. And I'm old. God, I'm old enough to be your mother. You know, and then a lot of the others who are out are younger than you are true so we're we're seeing a third generation coming public now and with each generation comes more advanced technologies and and they're farther out into space so people need to understand that there's there's a context to all of this Mm-hmm. And because I was a navigator on a ship, I was stuck inside the ship and hardly ever was allowed off of it because it was a security risk. Because I had the star maps in my head and I was chipped directly into the ship's computer. So me being off the ship and out of the security zone meant that any telepath could get their secure information out of my head. Mm -hmm. So I was like major prisoner de facto. So there's a lot of the things that, that everybody else talks about that I have no idea what you're talking about. I was not involved in that because my talents were elsewhere. And it doesn't mean that I wasn't involved in the programs, just right. that my talents put me in a different aspect of it. So I'm listening to your story like everybody else. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I, I, I often see the numbers coordinates are given to me um, right before I, I open my eyes when I wake up and I write them down. And um, I know on one of my missions, I was a pilot and these three agents came up to me, a uh, female and two males, and they wanted to know the an equation because I can see a lot of numbers and I like the quantum physics, you know, kind of equations. And That's I usually cool. have, yeah, I usually have dreams where I'm in a classroom and there's all these numbers in the whiteboard, green board, black board, and, and I'm, this may sound crazy to some people, but I do know when the Council of Five is out there or the dragons are out there, our dragon ships, because I see them and I see numbers in the clouds. I see, that's why I kind of like post a bunch of pictures on Facebook. Um, then I get tired and I, you know, put them down. I don't know. I go through these phases, but I see, I know when something's out there and it's not there for the eyes to see, but I'll take three consecutive pictures now without the flash. And uh, if you want to kiss, get their attention, you do it with the flash. But I do see a lot of ships. I know, for example, when the Murr family is up there, you know, when the dragons uh, ships are out there, when the mantis ships are out there, they're like, they came down uh, to, in 2017 when I saw them coming down, I was driving and I had to pull over the side to take pictures. They were these tiny little egg shaped little drops they were just coming down, coming down. I'm like, holy heck, you know, am, am I going nuts? But I've also seen that same one in a, in a, a dream where uh, I think Jamie, uh, Amaria and Susan were there. We were like in a hotel, prisoners. And there was this man that didn't want me to leave. And I finally said, you know, I did something to where he let me go. And on the, on the bed, there was a bunch of paperwork. I had to run out with paperwork. I said, told the girls, um, throw in whatever you can in your suitcase. We're leaving. They're picking us up. We ran outside. There's this huge egg looking thing coming down and right above me. And we were supposed to like take off in it. Um, I've had many dreams and ships and things like that. I'm still trying to remember the one that I that I served in and it's many missions. Um, I do see the one that looks like the Star Trek one. I do see the one that looks like the reptilian long one. I do see the the little the little one in Star Trek when you're fighting and you see all these these colors, but it's it's like numbers. It's it's like the Merkaba and it's like shifting like really fast and you're like you have to aim like right in the middle. Um, it doesn't have like wings. It's like it's kind of like a, just a cockpit, pretty much. Um, yeah. There's other ships that I've seen that are black, like the ones that you used to, like I used to have, my dad taught me how to do planes when I was a kid. So you just, the basic ones that you throw across the room, I see those in black. Um, uh, those those in black are Nachtwaffen. Okay. And I know I was there um, in Mars, you know, with my um, Alter Soel, fighting against the raptors, saving, you know, the children in cages. It was pretty tough when I was under regression with James Ring because I just started crying. Um, it's, you know, it's tough. When, when I was under know. regression with James Ring, we were trying to get details of my interaction with him so an artist could draw what he looked like there. And instead of going where I was supposed to go, I went into, it was like, cotton candy clouds that were tomato red and if you get the tomato red during a regression that means you're in a danger zone and it did activate my omega programming and he called in some ets who spent three months playing in my head and eventually shut down the omega programming tell me but about the omega programming what is that that's your self-destruct programming Oh, crap. It's, it's when you reach a point where they really didn't want you to remember this shit. And so you have a the Omega programming is so you will kill yourself and anyone you have given the information to. And that's so what that's, that's sorry, Penny, that that's probably what happened to me then when I shot myself, because 
I was hearing kill yourself. You're not worth it. Blah, blah, blah. Your husband's well, cheating. That, Get it that, over with. That could be just VJK. And I saw blood like on my bed, you know, and I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm done. That, that can be V2K as well. And that can be well, yeah. uh, anybody on the planet. But those of us who were out there, um, we have a lot, a lot of things they really don't want us to remember. They don't want us to talk about. And when they come up, we'll get this, this Omega programming. And, you know, the super soldier community that came out ahead of the SSP people, a lot of their people actually killed themselves and their families. And this is something that the people coming forward now need to know about is when you start going public, you activate that o Omega programming and then you've got these suicide thoughts in your head. And if you're not strong, you're going to end up killing yourself and, and the people you love. So this needs to be awareness, not scared of it but mm -hmm. awareness because there are ways it can be stopped now 20 years ago when these guys were going through this there weren't mm -hmm. but because of their problems with it ways to deal with it have been developed so and i want i want to say for the record for everybody out there ssp and super soldiers are variations of the same theme as me labs and targeted individuals we're part of a continuum we have not all been through the same things but we have all been through similar programs and they are all at the hands of the cia and the department of defense and none of us asked for this exactly so I'm not playing victim here. I'm exposing violations. So this, this, is, this is my whole reason to be on here is I'm exposing these violations of our personal rights because regardless of, of how they see us, we're still human beings. Yes, we are. You know, I was watching, um, it took me four times to finish watching this movie that I've never seen, Insurgents. Oh, my God. It was so triggering. Um, in one of the scenes, um, it's like the white building with the windows. And that's, uh, I, I was remembering one dream that I had where I was also running through the hallways. And this is pretty weird. My mom was holding the door for me to run out. And uh, Susan was there, and I was, I was telling them, you know, I got to go, you know, open up, open up. So I was just like running through. Um, there was these different rooms where, where we would stay, uh, the, the super soldiers would stay, but I was wearing like this black suit, um, uh, business suit. And I was running with those files. This was back in 2017 also. And, and I bet you were in high heels. Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was running a white blouse, black, top black pants it was uh very triggering for me i also i had never seen uh universal soldiers return with van damme i couldn't i can't finish watching that one um i watched um gaming i cried after i what i do is these memories come and then i start decoding everything so it's really hard to even read a book or something because i'm like ah oh, you know i'm decoding stuff that yeah, I, it's have, in there. I, I can't do the video games. Um, I, I turn them all, I have turned them on at, at my kids' houses and it's like I get an instant migraine. And mm -hmm. if I go very long, something will literally put me to sleep. So this is, this is, I'm not allowed to play those. I can't do a lot of the movies. Um, I, I go on a streaming service and I'm watching historical stuff and, and <laughs> you know, his, yeah. historical fiction. <clears throat> and um, I'm triggered by the stuff in that because a lot of historical fiction has battles. And, you know, if you're talking about Vikings, we used 
laser versions of their weapons a lot of the time. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and you mentioned that, and that's for sure in Mars program. And I, I, I see myself in the black suit with the black helmet. You can't see each other. Right. Yeah. And then I have these two like swords that come out, but they're way better than like regular swords, you know, and, and then the lasers. program. Yeah. And the Kruger, Kruger program, I have my left arm that's like robotic and stuff and choom choom. It's, it's crazy. I feel like, am I in a cartoon? <laughs> Yeah. you know battling <laughs> yeah but yeah we did have a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat um Jamin said see and I know that that I gotta work with what they call them or do something with my memories because I'm still every night like you, you told me I said Penny how can I get my memories back and this was in 2017 you're like just ask your subconscious and every night I do I had another nightmare the other day and it's like I, I, and I tell myself, it's okay. I just got to get through them. I got to, I got to do it for me. You know, I got to remember. And I know Penny that I know more, more, I know more like, but where, where are they? Like, come out now. Why are they afraid? I know that I know something that they don't want me to say. I mean, even in the second show that we try to do, you're like, you must have said something. <laughs> And then when I was talking to Misha, they also, it's like they, they wouldn't let, ugh. I was trying to make another program for, with Brazil, the second and third program that I was supposed to be on the video, the, uh, the, the video and, and radio show in Spanish, you know, we did, yeah. um, by the way, um, Marinel Travacin, she, one of your videos that talks about the secret space program, she um, did it in Portuguese. She translated it and a lot of people loved it. Tell and her so I said wanted, thank you. Um, I will. My my videos have been translated into I think it's six languages now. Um, I have more followers in Russia than I do in America. Wow. Um, so they're in Russian, German, Portuguese, um, Indonesian. And I was asked about French and Spanish, but I haven't seen any of the results. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, um, that you talk about like the German and Russian, like I will hear um, sometimes when I'm waking up, I'm hearing them speak to me in German and in Russian. And I'm like, what the heck? How many languages do I know? <laughs> uh, I have a friend distant cousin who does magic and he has done a spell for me to remember all the languages that my soul speaks wow and so yeah. there are bits filtering up but not enough to speak any of them yet mm -hmm. and uh I thought that was kind of interesting that that was even a possibility. <laughs> that that's, awesome. that's what he did. Yeah. So Good. what can I say? I have family. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, I did my family tree because my grandparents lied about who we were. And in the process of doing that, I actually found cousins on Ancestry.com and they were who brought me to Facebook in the first place. <laughs> nice. Wow. And when I came online, I was on Ancestry, not, not social media. So they have a, a message service where we can talk, talk to each other, compare notes and things. And it was one of my uh, cousins from Ancestry who brought me to Facebook. Nice. So. Yeah, um, it's it's funny you mentioned that because I, I need to find out like what to do or where where to do the I guess DNA thing or whatever. Um, my sisters are always saying, well, why don't you do a DNA test? Because I'm finding out about my German bloodline. Um, that's an, it's on both sides of the family. My mom's great grandfather and my grandmother's father on my dad's side um grandfather so um they're like oh we don't believe you kind of a thing why don't you just do a dna test and i said yeah but if i do a dna test 
um, it's not going to be the same as you, I tell them, because I have altered DNA from the Draco, from the dolphin, and, and the different And for, for the public, the CIA has samples of those, those mm -hmm. genetics, and they come through and insert them into us at the embryo stage. So this is this is the CIA's med medical and science people are interfering with our personal genetics and have been mine were messed with in 1955. They have had this technology that long. So when they're talking now about, oh yeah, we're gonna take parts from humans and parts from pigs and put them together. They already did that. They, they've been doing that since the 50s, at least. And there, I run across information that they may have been doing it since the 1850s, not wow. just the 1950s. So this is, there's nothing new under the sun. And that's a quote from the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I often know I had a hysterectomy at the uterus and service taken out in 2012 um, due to the anthrax quaalude that they shot me up with and when I was in the U.S. Army. Um, so but I often, I, I just know that they have the technology to actually insert a, another uterus and cervix in me if I need to, you know. All they have, I know to, I was, all I was, they have to do is put you in a regen tank mm -hmm. and grow it back. Yeah, and I know I'm part of the breeding program. I know for sure I have one little girl that's that's out there. I've, I've actually drawn her. She has red hair, freckles, really curly red hair. And, and it's just, I had one we'll say ghost pregnancy when I was like 19 hmm. um, for almost three months, I didn't get a period and I was growing. And then all of a sudden I got it. And by this time we, the, the person that I was with, he was in the military too. We, he was my fiance back then. Um, he got all excited of course, cause he didn't want to have kids. And we went to Planned Parenthood and he had us donate all kinds of baby clothes, which is great. But they, you know, they talk about the abortion and all that. And it's like, you know, I wish people would know that, talking about that now, that they that they use this in certain products and food. And then black goo, too. I know, and I've been talking about this. I tell people, stop drinking the black cola or whatever Pepsi, because that stuff has black goo in it. I just know it. Well, and... I stopped drinking it a long time ago because... I found that I was getting sick. Anytime I drank soda, even even the white sodas, um, the clear ones, I would get sick. And so I stopped drinking anything that was carbonated and I stopped getting sick. And for a long time, I, I was almost overdosing on coffee and now I'm allergic to coffee. <laughs> so I'm overdosing on coffee. <laughs> Um, I have this stuff. It, it's Numi, and it's mm -hmm. it's a spiced tea. Oh, that looks good. Tea. And I don't even have to heat it, although I usually do when I first put the water in. Mm -hmm. um, it it does all right, even as as a cold brew. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going back to your. It's expensive. It's eight dollars a box. Oh, but it, but it, tastes, it tastes wonderful. Can I get it anywhere? Um, I get it from the health food store. I haven't looked anywhere else. I have to go there once every three months to pick up my B12. I have pernicious That's anemia. And the, I have to take B12 also. It's, um, it's a common problem in our bloodline. And I say our bloodline because... Right. Max Spears said six, seven years ago, he's on his first interview with Miles Johnston. He said that 
These programs were targeting Merovingian descendants. He called it the blue blood. Yeah, the blue bloods. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's a term that, that Stuart Swerdlow also uses is blue bloods. And so these are the descendants of Clovis the first. And there are probably millions of us worldwide, but we have the people who have been targeted for these programs are all from that family line. And you don't have to be white people to be this. There's been so much interbreeding intermarriage between the races that you can be any color or race and still be descended from Clovis. So people need to understand that this is not a racial thing. This is a bloodline thing. Right. So. You know how you were talking about your, um, your family tree. Um, I discovered that both my mother's grandfather and my father's grandfather, they changed their last name. So it just makes me think they were running. They were running because they were after a bloodline. <laughs> yeah. That's how I see. The Vatican no. has been trying to kill off our bloodline since there was a Vatican. And this isn't this isn't a religious issue for me. This is a power structure issue for me. Our mm -hmm. family and the Vatican were in competition for who was going to rule Europe. And we lost. And now we're targeted by a space program that they're messing with our very DNA, who we are. So they are changing us going forward. Now, the, I was shot up with Draco DNA. And so my children have that heritage now. So yeah, my kids do too. I'm O, o negative blood type and my, both my Leos, <laughs> they're both Leos. Uh, they have O positive. So my mom negative was O negative part. and my dad was A positive and they were both descended from Clovis and um, I'm an O positive and so are my, my boys. You know what's funny is uh, my mother and her mom and my two sisters and I are O negative. That's a lot of O negative blood. But I'm thinking, why didn't my sisters get taken? Why me? You know, and I just they found my sister been. that, huh? They may they, have been. I know my, my daughter's being used. I told you about that dream she, she said. Yeah, they, uh, they take families and they may very well have been because I have two siblings that have small birth defects consistent with the Draco DNA. I have one sister that her ear curls over almost shut which Draco don't have an outer ear, so ear deformities go with it. And my brother and I, and I have two brothers, so I'm not identifying which one. <laughs> my brother and I both were born with hammer toes. And I was born with hammer toes, and I've had five surgeries on my feet. Um, I guess the one, could it be from the aquatic or the Draco? What do you think, or both? It, it sounds to me like either one would have done it. Um, they're so bad, Penny. They're so bad. I call them my alien toes because they're bad. And then they had like so many. I, I tend, I don't know. This is a good question. I tend to grow extra bone. So I've had to have the places shaved in my feet. Um, they had to take a bone out of each toe. The pinkies are overlapping. It's embarrassing. But now I'm like, you know what? I love my alien toes. What can I do? I can run now. I wasn't, I was like not able to, to run um, after the academy, the police academy. So between the time that I went before the academy and the time that I lateraled over to another department, I had the surgeries. And it's, okay. it's been a challenge, you know, but you uh, know what's I have, I have a challenge walking and, and running and doing anything with my feet. Um, when I had to be on my feet all the time, I wore prescription arch supports. Um, 
Yeah, me too. I had those. And that was the only way I was able to stay on my feet for an eight to 10 hour shift. And yes, I was working those. Um, but I came home from work one day and sat down on the couch and was paralyzed for three weeks. And I haven't tried to work since. I don't know what made me paralyzed. I don't know what made it go away. Um, I'm thankful it went away. I've had one relapse that lasted half a day after I had my hair cut, which is why my hair is now down to my ass. Because I love your long hair. <laughs> I'm trying to grow uh, mine. <laughs> hair, hairdressers want to tilt you back into the sink. And that was yeah. what that was what paralyzed me that day. So mm. if I could get one that would would be satisfied with tilting me forward. Because that mm -hmm. doesn't bother me. It's the tilting me backwards. But uh, rather than fight with them, I've just not gone. Uh, mm -hmm. The last one that I had a trim, she looked at me and she says, what do you want? I said, four inches taken off the bottom and you can use your spray bottle to wet it. And she goes, Okay, and she took the chair up as far as it would go, and she was still on her knees on the floor to be able to do it. <laughs> and I felt so bad for her, you know. There's never she, well, she had not swept the the hair off the floor, so here she was on her knees in everybody else's hair on the floor, and oh, I, right. I was I felt so bad for her. Yeah. You know. Um... My, it's funny, I, I, I finally found one of the baby pictures where my hair is fiery red, because nobody believes me. I was born with barely any hair, but what, what I had was blonde. Then it turned this fiery red, and then when I was 12 or so, it turned like a little amber. But um, uh, one of, uh, Colin on, uh, on Facebook, he says, are you a Ranga? I'm like, what's that? He said it's it's redhead for Australian. I was laughing. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Every time I, I have my hair dyed, it turns red. You know, I try and do like um, the blonde. Yeah. Thing, it turns red, like like metallic I, red. I, I can't dye my hair anymore. The last time I did, I had I had a layered cut, you know, two layers. And I dyed the underside this really bright blue. And it was so much fun. And about six weeks yeah. in all of that hair broke off at the root and it has grown back in a silvery gray color and it's really fragile and it won't get more than about eight inches long. So I destroyed yeah. it just, and that was just a color. It wasn't even a bleach. So wow. uh, my hair is a lot thinner now because that was like half my hair just is gone. And uh, Real quick, um, my I hair, two. if I go out in the sun, it shines copper. It yeah. like, it like yeah. glows. But mm -hmm. in indoors, it's mouse brown with silver streaks. <laughs> when I bend forward, you can see the streaks. <laughs> <laughs> see. Yeah, and the sun line is red too. How pretty, yeah. Do you have cowlick too? I have two cowlicks on here. I have a widow's peak that that is a pain. Oh in yeah, the I have a widow's peak. Yeah, the it's beak. A, yeah, the beak. It's a total. The <laughs> it's a total pain in the ass. It's like always in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they say it's a sign of beauty. <laughs> it's just a pain in the ass. It won't go anywhere. So <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So I had two questions. Uh, one, can you get, I'm, I could be on my tiptoes for a long time. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. I find that funny it's because the like foot after all these flat. surgeries. It's putting huh? the foot flat. That's painful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's exactly. because Draco walk on their toes with their heels okay. up in the air, just like a dog or a cat. Okay. It makes so, sense now. So it feels you, really good to be on my tiptoes. Yeah. That's why I asked if you were running in heels. <laughs> <laughs> I love heels. I'm able to wear them now after all these freaking surgeries and the weight loss. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I, I go barefoot so much of the time that when I have to go to a conference or something and actually wear shoes that my heels start bleeding. I'm barefoot. <laughs> Well, in that case, we can show our weird toes. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> oh my God! I, that means I have no. I can't. nobody's watching, right? It's just huh? us, right? Nobody's watching, just us, right? This is live. We're I thought on, you said radio. <laughs> we are live on radio and a Facebook feed <laughs> that's video. Dang! I haven't seen the other live ones that we've been on. <laughs> Oh my god! Let me see if I okay, can. Okay, well, you go first. Foot, if I can get this foot high enough to bring the camera. Put the work. camera down or something. Yeah, I'll have to take the camera. <laughs> no way! Your 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 yours look like mine. What the heck? Oh, well. That's I what I said. Um, the other one, um, I had an inter. Well, I had an intervention when I was a toddler. Um, start, they started when I was about six weeks old and they literally taped my toes to silver half dollars. And it took on the left foot. Okay. It took on the left foot, but not on the right. So the right foot is, is how I was born. The left foot is almost fixed, but I still have the problem with, with I prefer to walk on my toes, you know, the toes and the balls. And yeah. because the middle one, yeah. well, the one for, for the second toe, the bone is longer. So I end up hitting on that bone and then rolling. And people who know about body mechanics understand the kind of problem that creates for my hips. So now I'm 65 years old and I have this hip problem because my feet are deformed. And what happened to your mic? Oh, I don't know. I didn't touch You there? I'm having a hard time hearing you now, and you, I didn't before. Okay. Uh, let me mute and unmute, see if that works. Is that better? No. I didn't do anything. I know. I moved my mic, and suddenly I can't hear you. And my mic is not connected to my speakers at all. So... Uh -huh. Um, I'm having a really hard time. Um, Katie, can you hear Veronica? Can you hear me, Katie? Katie. That's crazy. <clears throat> well, get closer to your mic. <laughs> thing in and now i can hear you talk you can? yes you can hear me can now you i can you? hear you you want me to show you my weird feet sure <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be like what okay look at it. it's uh well okay. so the toes do you see it yeah it's just like mine Except minor, minor are two of them curling over. Yeah, it's uh, and they're kind of weird. So, um, my my boys, my middle son, he has curled under. Oh, so See, that's how mine were. That's why they had to take out a bone out of each toe and then shave off the extra bone on one of the toe, uh, big toe, and then I had plantar fasciotomy on the left one. Now, when I started working out again after all this surgery and crap this last year, on the elliptical, it was so hard, Penny, because there was an extra bone that grew on my left foot oh, for a whole year. And 
it's it's really painful. I didn't on my right. Sorry, I didn't want to have another plantar fasciotomy on the right. So I just like said, "F it, let's do this." And now it's okay. I mean, it's just I have to wear special shoes all the time. When I was a baby, and my mom, when I started walking at nine months, and she said that for a whole year they were able to, a family member gave us gave me special shoes that I could wear, but after that they couldn't afford them anymore. So I super yeah, expensive. Yeah, every pair of shoes that I have, it goes outward. I have found that I do better wearing men's loafers. And Ooh, I might try that. The toe box is bigger. Mm -hmm. And they come, they're made wider. So um, I do fine as long as I'm in a place where I can wear either men's loafers or men's hiking sandals. But if I have to wear women's shoes, they cut up my feet and I'm bleeding all over. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would have to wear the Band-Aid, you know, when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure you had two behind you. I still your, have um, to. <laughs> right? Yeah, and I the, still uh, have to. The Achilles? <laughs> yeah, on the Achilles. I, I, I still Sorry. have to wear the Band-Aid on the Achilles if I'm wearing women's shoes. <laughs> yeah. and, and I've been to three, three conferences. And I'm going along and I'm, I'm wearing slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. And they're like, uh, what do you think you're doing? Uh, I have deformed feet. Deal with it. At least yeah. they're covered. <laughs> you're like, hide me behind the podium then. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I started wearing, when I started wearing heels, I started practicing at like 13. And I would always like hit myself everywhere. I still think I can go through walls. I hit myself constantly. And then um, my mom- You can go through walls in space, yes. Yeah, you can. And you know what? I was gonna bring that up because I have a lot of stomach problems and Jamin and I were talking about that machine that I had um, in my, under the belly button. And I don't have a belly button now after what happened to me. I uh, lost three quarters of the large, large intestine. I almost had a colostomy bag after all this crap thing that I went through um, to not be here on earth, but I'm still here, right? So uh, he was still here. We're talking to you. Still here. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm real right now in the 3D. But yeah, I um, I have a hard time here because um, I drive with my senses. Yeah, I see. I can see. Well, I can't see. I got I got to wear this contact to see close and this one to see far. Without glasses, forget about it. I can't see, but I, I've gotten used to using my cat eyes at night okay. or I, I'll cook without them. I mean, I'm pretty much blind. But when I drive, I drive with my senses, okay? Like my daughter the other day, didn't you see that car? And I'm like, yeah, I felt it coming and I can see. It's just that, I mean, I was in training in the police academy, obviously, and in space, but this is weird to me because I want to go through freaking walls here. It's like what, I can watch see that. walls sometimes. Watch huh? that. I like having you in 3D with me. Thank you. <laughs> I just like um, feel stuck I haven't. Dr I've driven once in the last year and a half since I had the shoulder injury. Lou's been driving. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wear my glasses because I'm farsighted. And if I'm going to see anything within three feet of me, I have to have glasses. Mm -hmm. It's outside of three feet. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, you're lucky. 2020, I can, I, 2020 past three feet, but inside the three feet, I need the glasses and it's getting worse. And I have this problem of, of dimensional vision where I'm seeing things overlapping and there that's what it is that's what it is yeah that's what it is dimensional vision you're seeing okay, more, I can see more like, than yeah. one you're seeing more yeah. than one dimension at a time yes and yes. I because my father didn't, and he would beat me if I described anything that wasn't 3D, I figured out what other people can and can't see. So what other people can see is 3D. 
<laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what dimensions the others are, but what other people can see is 3D. So Right. So I under, now you understand me because I can see. I, I understood what you were saying before. Yeah. I'm describing okay. so the audience understands what you're saying. But how did you do with your father, though? How the hell did, well, you're psychic, never mind. I was going to say, how did you, how, how is it that you it, can say I, what to say and what not to say? That you I got beat a lot. I got beat so bad, so bad uh -oh. sometimes that I couldn't walk for weeks at a time. I, I missed like, like school has four quarters. I would miss yeah. a quarter of the year because of beatings or sickness because he smoked in the house. Um, our people are very sensitive to things like smoking and we end up sick and we have, to, we pretty much have to have clean air, clean water. And when we don't get it, we're sick. And I was, I was either sick or I had been beaten where I might as well have been sick. And I missed a quarter of the year every year, even into high school. He finally stopped beating me when I was 16. You know, and I, I, I talk about this. I mean, my father was as efficient at creating altars as the CIA was, probably more so because he didn't, he did not use sexual abuse to do it. Mm -hmm. He used beatings and sheer terror. He would lock me inside a closet with black widows, you know. He claimed he didn't know they were there until mom showed him. But neither one of them believed me when I told them. I'm sorry. So, so yeah, this is this is what my fa my birth family is. And people people in the community say, well, you know, you really need to make up with your mom. No, I don't. It ain't gonna happen. My mom is my mom is programmed to be my handler. And if I am around her, I will not have my life. Every time she has contact with me, she tells me to stop talking that I'm going to get her arrested. For what? Right. But that's her personal programming. Mm -hmm. Is that Penny has to be kept quiet because Penny's going to get her arrested. Because someone with a future machine, whether it was Chronovisor or... or <sighs> Pegasus or Looking Glass or any of those, even just remote viewing. Mm -hmm. Someone with a future seeing device has figured out that I'm going to tell the truth and it's going to make a difference. And so my mom has programming to shut me down. Now, I can either be out here public telling the truth or I can be made up with my mom. I can't be both. I understand. So um, yeah. that's a big problem that I have with the new age community is that they have oh. all of these screwball ideas about you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. No, you don't. It's no, you just, don't. And then it's some just more you. rules wanting us to be submissive slaves. Right. They're telling me, go vegan, go blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I tried going without me for three months. My hair started falling. Oh, that's just an excuse. You have to drink, you know, this. You have to eat that. You have to stop drinking coffee. You have to, I'm like, I don't have to do crap, nothing. We're Merovingians. We're Merovingians. We have different requirements. Yeah, all this essential that's the, crap. That's the honest to God truth. We are not the same species they are. No, we're not. And we're not. that... Okay, I'm on layer 10 of the rabbit hole. And at layer 10, I figured out, yes, I'm one of those people. Yes, we are a different species. Yes, we have different requirements. Um, even though the masters of the universe are the same species that I am. Exactly. Thank I am you. not one of them because my line was discarded almost 400 years ago. Okay. When we were exiled to America by Oliver Cromwell, we were, we were written off as dead. So every one of us since then has been discard. So I'm trash to both sides. 
So this has been my layer 10 of the rabbit hole is that I personally am considered trash by everybody. And so at this point, I'm speaking my truth to as many people as will listen for as long as I can before they kill me. Exactly. I, 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 I hear you. So I admire you for that. And that's why when you started saying speak, I, I spoke and, I, and I'm not going to stop. Well, I, what I told everybody, what I have told everybody I have counseled with is unless you have a fire in your gut, don't come public because once you do, you can't take it back. And there exactly. are consequences. And if you have small children, especially if you have a hostile ex, don't go public. I already did. You're, <laughs> you're just asking for trouble. Trouble you don't need. <laughs> trouble your child doesn't need. You know, I've seen people lose their lose their job, lose their house, lose custody of their children, all because they admitted to the possibility of this. Come on, this is this is not something you get money for, unless you're one of unless you're one of the chosen that Gaia thinks you're wonderful. Nobody gets any money in this field. This is something you do because. You have a fire in your belly. Exactly. It's either your truth or it isn't. Right. Even last July, I was taken to court because the ex wanted to take his part of the retirement away from me. And I'm like, no, that's tax free. You know, um, he, he would be happy if I was out in the streets. I had to live with family for a year before I got my disability. You know, it's been tough every freaking year going to court for what? And then finally he was able to, you know, the judges was, was in this, the, both judges were in this through, it's been a good eight years now that I'm divorced. It's been eight years of hell. And now that I started going public, well, last year he took me to court and he said that I owe him for fines. And I'm like, really? You're the one taking court. We lost your, your voice again. So can you hear me now? No. can't hear you talk no. yes no. now i can hear you okay yeah so um it's just been eight years Other that i've years. been divorced is that better uh, i was yeah i've been divorced for 20 years and he was supposed to be paying me 450 dollars a month for yeah. that whole time and to be honest, I never billed him for it because I wanted him gone. And he married somebody else and eventually moved out of state and, and left me alone. And then one day I got a letter in the mail from a bill collector saying he had died and they wanted the money from his estate. And I said, I divorced that man. <laughs> I'm oh, that's right. You, you told me. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, I go just, talk to her. <laughs> you know, she's the one that, that, that had him the last 20 years. <laughs> and, and I heard from her after that. And she was wanting to know if I knew about any resources. And I said, honey, he owes me $450 a month for 20 years plus interest. Mm hmm and she says, well, he didn't leave anybody anything. <laughs> and I haven't it's, heard from wow. her since. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, they never change. Yeah, no, what I was saying is when uh, that the judges are in this because we're targeted individuals. So it's not, um, just, it's not just that. It's the whole right. system is set up for corruption. There and you go. it's designed that way. Mm-hmm. If you're and getting justice, it's it it's an accident, <laughs> or some, <laughs> or somebody liked you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not jaded about the justice system. They mm -hmm. start they start off at a very low level. That once you 
once you reach a certain level in in anything they have a party and there's all the the vices in the world there free and once you have enough of something to pass out they put you in a bed and you know they're being nice they're putting you in a bedroom and then you wake up with either a naked child in the bed beside you or a photo of a naked child beside right. you and mm -hmm. from that point on they own you mm -hmm. that's and how they get these guys that's how they get everybody mm -hmm. every business every country it's not just america it's all over the frigging world this is how they run the place and i had this explained to me by a district attorney Dang. in my little backwoods country town so this is how it's done and you know what um sorry this this is why we the people never get justice this is why we never get what we want out of congress this is why we can't end the wars this is why nobody has peace is <coughs> so and this is why we are taken for space because the bloodline that we are are called dragons not because of animal ancestry but because the original word for dragon meant clear seeing we can that's see beautiful. through their shit. exactly and that's why we are a threat to them and that's why they take us for space to make everybody else think we're crazy but we're not we can still see through their shit. Yeah, we can. Definitely. So. Yeah, the last time when I was in court on July 1st of last year, he, he uh, wanted me to pay him for all the fines. For all his attorneys. I'm losing your voice again. And now you're for- Did I lose you? Oh, yeah, you go. did. <clears throat> You're back. You're back, baby. Yeah, and, and so he had a <laughs> yay. So he had the he had his attorney, the judge put a a lien. I don't know what the word is called against me, so I can't buy anything new. I can't have anything under my name. I'm like, I'm gonna still have what I'm gonna what I need. You know, you guys are not gonna scare me. Um, I've had enough, Penny. You know, I will be provided for what I need. My mm -hmm. car's falling apart. So I don't know. Somehow, some way, I'm going to get my car fixed. New tires. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's every month. It's like, how am I going to make it? But I make it. And no, because well. you have to use your abilities. You have to, you have to, you know, it's the, it, we have to manifest everything left and right. Uh, Lou and I and, have yeah, two, it gets tiring. Lou and I have two cars. Uh, we have a Chevy Blazer and we have a Mercury Mountaineer. And we live in the mountains, so we needed four-wheel drive. So both of them have four-wheel drive. And uh, right now, both of them are sitting in the driveway, broke down. Oh. And I have a doctor's appointment Tuesday. And... I, I don't know how I'm going to get there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... I understand you. There are days that I don't have gas, so I just don't go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I have a flat tire, and I'm like, well, I guess we'll use Fix-A-Flat, and then they don't want to repair it because it has Fix-A-Flat. <laughs> anyway. Well, Fix-A-Flat <laughs> just... is a major pain in the ass for them. <laughs> yeah. They don't so, even want to deal with the wheel afterwards. <laughs> they don't. <clears throat> Lou used to work in a tire shop, so I know all about oh. He would come home and cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but, a tough Yeah, job, it does right? work, you know, and for those of us who are marginal, <laughs> that's a good <laughs> word for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, um, we started doing better when I got injured this last time because I was so helpless that I got in-home supportive services. So Lou is being paid to take care of me now and it's, it's enough money that we can pay for car repairs and things like that. It's not enough to make us rich by any means. And I'm blessed that that um, he shares it with me because it is his earnings. Yeah. So. Um, so Penny, we were supposed to talk about the black goo. <laughs> we still have 45 minutes. We do? OK. OK, good. I'm like, I didn't know if we had an hour or two hours today. <laughs> My show is two hours. OK, OK. I got a little bit confused. Because you said in the next hour or something. I'm like, okay. I thought we were going to be on like at 1245 my when time. When I then... said in the next hour, that was when it was supposed to start. Okay, got it. Blonde moment. <laughs> I've, I've got people that, that I think I'm speaking clearly, distinctly, logically, and no possible misunderstanding. <laughs> And yet people will still come up with all kinds of things. And I'm like dumbfounded. I'm trying really, really hard. <laughs> it was clear. It was clear before the show, like about a month ago. It was clear when, when or whenever we made the appointment. Yeah, I was clear. And then all of a sudden it's like, what? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, are, are we in Mercury Retro already? <laughs> I think that starts in March or something. <laughs> I think there's three of them a year, something like that. You know, they were talking about the solar flashes and stuff on the 21st and stuff like that. Well, I didn't feel anything until the 23rd. I was on the elliptical machine and all of a sudden I thought I was flying. I had never gone so fast on that thing. And then uh, I just felt like I was going through the sun portal or something because I had so much energy. I had never had that energy uh, just uh, wow. so, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't Jupiter and Saturn in conjunction I'll tell you what it was and yes people I do know astrology I just don't talk about it yes you do know <laughs> <clears throat> um, I talk about it privately to people um, what we have going on is there is an asteroid called Eris not Eros the love god Eris, sower of discord. Spell it. Spell it if you don't mind. E R I S. Oh my God! You said discord. Yes. My we sower, were attacked. My daughter and I were attacked the other day. The sower of mm -hmm. discord, and it is in conjunction with Mars, the ultimate warrior, and they're both <laughs> they're both in Aries. Oh my goodness! That's even worse. So we are talking about violence, anger, uh -huh. saying things you will regret and cannot take back. And this, this will last for a while. And they yeah. are sitting there in the home, the home house of Mars. It's a fire sign. So... <laughs> Any fight you can get into is going to go hog wild. It did. <laughs> and so what I've been doing is just backing off. First sign of hostility, I'm just backing off mm -hmm. because my moon is in Aries. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I finally got these because the Hulk was coming out and I wanted to kill somebody. The Amber in. For okay. freaking menopause, 49 years old going through freaking menopause, man. The Hulk is bad. Did they put a switch in us, the Anunnaki, or whenever they made our body? Did they put a switch in the feminine to just freaking um, try and mess with us? <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking. We got a switch or something. They had trouble figuring out how to make women and make them work. They, they had to use some of their, they had to use mitochondria from their own females in us to make us fertile. That's why we have menstruation instead of estrus. 
is because that came from the Anunnaki. And they're females. What's estrus? It's where you have a heat cycle. You know how oh, the... Oh, instead of the blood inst cycle? Instead of the blood cycle. That you is. have a heat cycle where that you go crazy and you will mate with any <coughs> any available male. <laughs> That's what the rest of... Is that of what I have? What the hell? Is that why I have yeah. cold flashes and hot flashes? What the hell, Penny? I can't sleep sometimes. Not only PTSD and now this shit. Stop. Sorry. You, this sounds like regular menopause to me. I went through it early because I had a hysterectomy in 1988. I was in my early 30s. So, yes, I recognize the symptoms. So I had a hysterectomy in 2012 and I'm 49. Is it a normal age to have it or is it early? A lot of people it, ask me, I'm like, I don't know. a normal age for it to start. Okay. And you may have But it. why is it so bad? I just, because I'm Because you had the hysterectomy. God dang. And some women have a harder time with than others. Okay. When my mom went through it, oh my God. <coughs> She cried. Oh, sorry. She cried. Mm -hmm. Cried. Sobbed. Hysterical sobs for seven years. And you'd ask her what was wrong. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was all mood swings. It had nothing to do with, with interaction with anybody. It was from the hormone levels dropping. Yes, our bodies are that screwy. And it's because we are mixed between the Homo erectus from this earth who had an estrus cycle and Anunnaki, not from this earth, who have a menstrual cycle. And so we have signs of both. And some of us have more one or the other. And it's just, we're screwed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so are the poor men who have to live with us. Yeah. Keep in mind, they have to live with us. So they're stuck with this too. Mm -hmm. Pity the man who has to go through this with the woman he loves. And she has no clue what's going on. Because they may tell us about when we start to have cycles, but they don't tell us about this. Mm -hmm. It's like a taboo subject am among women. So my show we break lots of taboos mm -hmm. i cuss we talk about sex we talk about cycles we talk about <laughs> we talk about <laughs> space we talk about how you get altars we talk about lots of stuff here so mm -hmm. and most of it's 3d rational based isn't it mm -hmm. yes once in a while we'll actually talk about what we do in space <laughs> But yeah, Especially if they have questions. <laughs> you and I both were Merovingian bloodline. We were both DNA modified with ET and other species. And we both have similar defects to show for it. I mean... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yes, it's just the two of us, so it's pretty hard to say, well, this is the way it is. But when I was still in the group that had 3,300 members, we had done a poll. And I admit it's not real scientific because it was who was willing to, to join Answer. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we don't make any of these mandatory. So it's not a true scientific. Honey, are you sweating? No. You're glowing. There's water I, coming I in. glow. This is part of my personal. <laughs> this is part of my personal DNA. DNA? Yeah. That's I, cool. When I'm not sick. Oh, shiny. I, when I'm not sick, I glow. And um, it's really, really, really noticeable in person. That's so uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hide. You can't hide. <laughs> no, I can't even hide in the dark. 
Quiet as a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Chalky white and glow in the dark. <laughs> Casper. <laughs> Sorry. I better let you finish what you were talking about the poll. <laughs> um, 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 the poll. Yes, okay. thank you, because my mind had gone blank. Uh, <laughs> the poll in the group. We had about 300 people participate, which is actually a really large sample for a special interest group. So we had, we had out of that group, we had almost half of us had autoimmune disorders. Almost half of us had either foot or ear deformities or both. Um, probably two thirds admitted to um, psychic abilities. Um, we didn't ask about glowing um, I've asked in other groups and not as many people wanted to participate, but, um, you know, Michael Lee Hill, you know who he is? Uh, I, I think he's a friend on Facebook. I haven't talked to him or anything, but yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, he's in the Anuna community who believe that they are, um, partial incarnations of Anunnaki and mm -hmm. he identifies with Ea, who in ancient times was the god of water. And he's the same as Enki, is the same as Odin, who is the All-Father, because in the all of the legends, it was only Enki's sperm that worked with the Homo erectus to produce us. So he is literally the father of us all at least our bodies, including the hybrids, because it was, there again, it, he was the father that created the hybrids that were left to run the place. So he's the father of all humans on earth, mm -hmm. the ultimate father. And so that is who Michael says he is a fractal incarnation of, and I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were listing off like certain things and what we had in common. I was going to ask you before okay. I forget the skin. Yeah. I have like problems. I have to use like, especially my daughter's special. Uh, well, this, soap, this, has, this has to do with the glowing. Okay. Okay. Michael and I met each other real world at a conference in Albuquerque in 2018. Um, Sasha and Janet Lesson put it on. And he's looking at me and he's going, Penny, you're glowing. Like, yeah. He goes, you're nothing. Like <laughs> I'm like, you know, you're just noticing this. But he talked, he has been on TV about his creatine kinase levels being outrageously high and that that goes with your cellular energy levels that that the higher your level of creatine kinase uh, the more atp you have in your cells and the more atp the more energy you have and that some of that energy is given off as photons as light and that this is why those who have more Jahami in their their DNA will glow. Now I know why they a lot of people like even if I don't know them they'll say wow you have so much light around you and I'm like yeah. well aren't we all made of light? <laughs> we are. And I don't know until you told me right now. That we sense. are, but some of us actually, our cells give off more. So it's a physical light source in addition to our soul light source. Got it. Now, that's, that's where I was going with that. Now, as far as the skin issues, that comes from the Draco DNA. That's what I thought. Draco. It's horrible. Draco have scales that are made out of keratin. 
like our hair is made out of keratin. And when you have too much Draco DNA, your skin cells will make keratin and it has nowhere to go because it's not a hair, it's not a scale, it's just something sitting there. So it forms um, the acne that's those little pills. Yeah, but then it, it pops green. It shouldn't be those popping little, green. Those little, um, they have to give my daughter a minocycline. Okay, hers are infected then. Now, <clears throat> what you need to do is Okay, when I was doing it once a week, I didn't have the acne. Okay, you get a tub of water deep and as hot as is comfortable. You don't want to burn yourself, but it needs to be hot for it to work, okay. to melt the stuff. And you put in two cups of apple cider vinegar. Now for people, oh, out, if, if, for people outside the United States, that's basically a liter. Okay, so you're putting in basically a liter of apple cider vinegar and half that much of Epsom baking salt. Soda? Epsom salt. I use Epsom salt and baking soda and apple cider vinegar. Well, I don't, I don't, it works with just the two, so I haven't added to it. Um, <clears throat> All right. I'm on the right track then, that's good. And I don't use the stinky Epsom salts. I use the ones that are plain. And okay. you just soak in it and you move your body around so everything gets hot water. And I scritch, um, my mother used to use a butter knife to, to scrape off the because as, as your skin get, gets warm, these things will sort of pop off, pop mm -hmm. out. So you can use something to scritch it off. And she used a butter knife because it wouldn't cut her. I use my fingernails because I don't want to mess with a butter knife in the, in the tub. <laughs> yeah. My mom yeah. had those things that look like a banana from Mexico. They're like really tough loofahs, really tough. Yeah. And she had a scrub our knees and our elbows with the rock, the pumice rock. I'm like, mom, yeah. you're crazy. No, she yeah. wasn't crazy. She knew what she was doing. Yeah. But this stuff yeah. has to be scraped off because if it's left, it'll plug <clears throat> up and then you end up with the infections like your daughter has. Yeah. I'm glad they're, they've subsided this year, but, but wow. Yeah, you need bad. to do this once a week. Okay. It's, I tend to get lazy and do it once a month. And while I'm in there, I do something that's technically the magic. I do, I do um, cord cutting. Oh, I do cord cutting in the shower too. My goodness. I, I, I do it in, in this soak because I'm already sitting there and it gives me something to do with my brain and I'm cutting all the cords while I'm scraping up all the stuff. Mm -hmm. because when I do these interviews, people, people are courting onto me as they read me and they don't let go. And what they're doing is they're finding out to their own satisfaction if I am what I say I am. Well, that's the hard time that I have too when, when people are just like when they first get to know me. I feel, I know who they are. Oh my God. Like I feel their their love no. is like a they're trying to use my luge because they know me but they don't no. know me in the physical and it's very i feel their thoughts i feel it's like get the f out of here it's like i don't well, I look feel, i'm a human I feel being i love you too but i just can't be i'm not in love with you just because i was in one of the programs with you okay yeah like why the heck do they do that it's, we're not superstars. We're just people. They do that because we're public and they think they know us and they're, they're hooking in because they want to satisfy themselves that we're real. But then they never, but then they never let go. 
And yeah, so it, it's like you're dragging all these people. And it wouldn't be so bad if I were only getting 100 people watching. <laughs> but I have interviews with James Rink that are 75,000 people. You know, there's that's a lot of people latched on to me. And so I do this at least once a month just to make it where I'm fresh and clean and not dragging half the world with me everywhere I go. Also, a problem that I have are a bunch of those people have decided that because they have hooked into me that we have telepathic connections. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys, I'm not hearing you. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, not hearing like you. That. So... If you think that you're having a two-way conversation with me, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing it. So whatever you think you're, you're, you're doing, it's not a two-way conversation. And it's not, it's not something I'm agreeing to. Right. So knock it off. Mm -hmm. It's invasive. Very. You know, think about how your sister would feel if some, but some stranger half the world across was suddenly saying she's saying that she's having a telepathic connection with them when she's not. And, and do the right thing. Be cool. Yeah. And a lot of people like, <clears throat> they keep asking me so many questions and yeah. it gets Those to the point the where... <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> I'm like, <clears throat> sorry, get to the point and book an appointment with me and, you know, give a donation or something. But a lot of people expect a lot of things for free. And I'm not like one to say no all the time. Like I will do service to others because like you say, we have to be 54% or whatever. I balance it. I balance it. But it, it's just really hard when the people that say, well, I don't have any money or I can't give a donation, but they keep asking questions like on my Facebook or the, the Instagram. And so I finally just have to ignore them or block them. And I feel bad, but it's like, I got to take care of my energy source, my surroundings, my time as above, so below. <clears throat> well, I've done a lot of things for free for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten to the point where I'm in bad shape physically. And I just don't have it to give. And a lot of people are getting really upset because I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, I'm just telling them, I'm giving them a list of people in the community that are still doing it. And all of them charge. And they're like, well, I don't have the money for those people. And I go, I don't know what to tell you because I can't anymore. I don't have it to give. You know, you can watch my videos and maybe you'll find your answer you're looking for. But I never did tell people what they were remembering, did I? No. I I don't tell them either because I don't want to be responsible for an implanted memory that's not even there. Bingo. <clears throat> that was what that was what my big fear was was that I was going to convince somebody that they had been part of something they weren't. Mm -hmm. And so I will list I would listen all day to what they remembered. And there were some people that were clearly delusional and I told them so. Oh, they got mad. Yeah. Then there are other people who are stuck in the, well, I had this dream, I had this dream, I had this dream. And they never learned to tell the difference between dreams and flashbacks. Mm -hmm. So, a flashback is a real memory, but a dream can be, can be all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to tell the difference. And <clears throat> then there were the ones that they knew they were memories, but they would never take responsibility for it being a memory. And they never called it anything but a dream. And I would get mad at those people because they knew and didn't want to acknowledge. <sighs> And yeah, nice. you, you, will run, you will run across those people because there's lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> so there are lots of people in this community who are very, very quiet too. 
they will sit there and judge the rest of us. And you can feel that judgment. And yeah, they're just some, there looking at us to say crap, you know, or, or it's like, well, then don't look at us. If, I don't know. I just, why are they wasting their time? Like listening, if they don't want to learn or, or come out in public and say what their experience was, you know? Some of them don't believe us. They think we're crazy. And they're just, I, I don't know why those people would bother to listen. Right. So, unless they think it's the newest big entertainment thing. And, <laughs> you know, I've been frustrated by by so many people thinking I was entertainment. Uh, yeah. That's not what I am. I am a whistleblower talking about programs that are kidnapping small children they're kidnapping pregnant women and messing with their babies. <clears throat> These are every bit as evil as the SRA events that other people are talking about. Just because they're being done by a government agency doesn't mean they're, they're proper. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm talking is these things have to be exposed. Well, we are at that point of the time <laughs> already <laughs> it just seems like we just got on i love being on with you thank you it's an honor i was so i was so thankful that you were willing to come on the day after christmas oh my god it was like i know it's a holiday weekend oh i'm going to have I'm, i didn't do anything <laughs> i don't care i'm like i'm like <clears throat> i was shredding paper <laughs> I, I, w I was doing this. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to spend the time talking with Odin because nobody's going to come on and talk to me. <laughs> not, that Odin, fun, not, <laughs> not that Odin's bad. Um, but, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> um, do you have Eric? Do you have Eric coming on on the 1st or 2nd of January? I have Eric coming on the 2nd of January, and he has a show on our network now. And hey, guess what? He invited me to go on with him on Monday in Odin. I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh. I think he has, I think he told me that he remembers my uncle, one of my uncles on my dad's side in the NASA program. Um, I sent him a picture. Eric, Eric <laughs> is a very interesting person. Give him a chance. He okay. has... <laughs> He had, his style is a little different from most of us, but like me, he tries to be more fact, fact oriented and less religion, um, but he'll go deep into politics. So <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> and, and, and he's, he's one of those guys that he kind of is, is stand and defend your position. Mm -hmm. And, um, He's not mad. He's not fighting. He's he's discussing, but he can get overpowering. And he, Lou and I spent a week at his house, and um, there were times that he was so overpowering that I shut down. So he's kind of figured out where my boundaries are, and um, he and I get along fine. Um, but that, that's the lay of the land. He, mm -hmm. he is still remembering what, what he was involved in. And his earliest memories are with the Monroe Institute and the remote viewing programs. But he's beginning to understand there were other things too. And uh, he has altars like I do. I know a lot of us say, I don't have altars. But when you oh, watch their videos, they do. <laughs> and then we shapeshift, too. Oh, my God, yes. A lot, a lot. <laughs> I've seen you shapeshift. <laughs> I, I usually shift alters at least three times per show. And um, <clears throat> Eric has teased me that he's taking bets on whether he can get it up to six. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it has to do with the region tank, with, with our blood, obviously, our, our DNA. But it also has to do with, like, 
because in because in space we can we can we have to morph into other bodies and they you know we change our our you know the bone structure and everything and I, I feel that that's why I have a hard time like wanting to walk through walls here or when I'm driving I'm just I'm in space I'm I'm always looking up when I'm driving most of the time you've been, you've been looking up most of the time this interview <clears throat> really yeah okay I didn't mean to <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm just, why? Why? I'm, just why? Sitting, I'm just sitting here watching you and, and oh, why? like a little kid why mama why why did I do that <laughs> well um well mm. honey um you need to plug your business now huh you get to shamelessly plug your business now oh oh thank you thank you well let's see <clears throat> I started my YouTube channel two years ago, and it's Veronica Bartolini with Unchained Hearts. And I'm a psychic medium, clear channel. I can tell the future, remote view, blah, blah, blah. I uh, do charge <laughs> for my services because uh, some things I do for free, but, but, um, but I just, I live with, you know, through my abilities. I, I make ends meet through them. Why not use them? That's my passion, right? <clears throat> I'm here to help. Um, I started my channel, the name Unchained Hearts, because I saw my heart like really ready to bust. It had chains and thorns around it. It was like black and purple. And I want to design a t-shirt, but the, the family member twice that I've made an appointment with has not showed up. I want to make a t-shirt like black and then like have a logo in the front like that. And then in the back, how the thorns and the chains come down off, right? And then, like, there's an open lock in the back. And I wanted to say that, Veronica Bartolini with Unchained Hearts, unchaining one heart at a time, something like that. Oh, that, um, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Yes, I see it. I see it. I have visions of speaking in public in many, many auditoriums and classrooms and dreams, too. So I know I'm going to be on with you and other SSP family members because I, like I was supposed to go to Vegas but I'll go next year start well, saving now this, this one is this one is in, in March coming up and I'm scheduled, I'm scheduled to be in it so you might talk to uh David Foreman about that yay okay David so and um, talk, what to, else? talk to David about being on with me I would love to I would love to be with you of real world Yes, me too. And me he too. would probably be happy to see more than just me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. He told me I have to get a professional photograph done with my hair done and wearing makeup. But you have a really pretty one in one of your, you're talking to this guy. I don't, he has an accent. I think uh, maybe he speaks Spanish. And you're like by a rock or something or something black behind you and you have your long hair and you're not wearing glasses and you're wearing makeup. That one's pretty. I thought that was professionally done. I don't have any that are professionally done. Um, all, of, all, of, all of the ones that I have on my Facebook, Lou has taken. Oh, that's nice. So, or um, if they're with other people, they were at conferences. Mm -hmm. Um, there's one of me with um, Kevin Estrella that that I look like shy little girl because I was, <laughs> I, was I was doing the fan girl thing. <laughs> the Come on, fan Kevin girl. Estrella is a major rock star in Canada. Yeah. Come on, you know, awesome. and the man's hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh -huh. and I saw he, that picture with you and him. And, yeah, sorry. And, and he comes. What? Along, what did Lou say? <laughs> oh, Lou says he doesn't do a thing for him. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm just meeting this man, and and he comes up and puts his arm around my shoulders and tells Lou to take a picture with his cell phone, with with wow. Kevin's cell phone, and I'm wearing this shirt, and it's like. I'm suddenly self-conscious about showing someone again. <laughs> like a teenager, like you said. Exactly. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. 
Oh my like, god. Me. It was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna be when I meet you. <laughs> oh no, no, we're friends. I I this was the first time I had met Kevin more than just to hear him talk about ET. Mm. And and um it was like, oh my god, he is so nice. You know, like <laughs> like a real person, not like, right. you know, I had no idea what, what professional musicians were like. And, and then he wrote that song for you, the one that you play in the beginning of the show. Yes, That's awesome. He, he wrote that song for me. And I, I asked him a couple of weeks back, he was on the show and I asked him, how the hell did you do that on a, on a guitar? <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's it's um, it's actually tonal language and it has meaning. It means, can you hear me? And he's playing that with the drums. And I've described it as as Rammstein meets whale song. <laughs> but it's it's so pretty it and is. it's it's perfect for what I talk about. Mm hmm. And I have written permission to use it on all of my stuff. So, and of course, YouTube doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we are at the end of our time. Thank you so much for coming. And I will be asking you back. Thank so. you, Penny. I love you. I love you too. You have a you have a great rest of the day. And <clears throat> we have a show following. It's called Ramona Speaks, The Other Truth. And I've been invited to stay for part of that. So bye. Yeah, I'm trying to get the, the feel of this. Am I in? Can you guys hear me?